TU100, my digital life. Sense and sense ability. Hello again. We're going to make a second program in Sense which will draw a square on the stage. Open the project SBG underscore project underscore 02 which contains the completed program from programming exercise 1. And immediately save this project as 02 underscore SOL. Notice that as you move the mouse cursor around the stage, the X and Y coordinates of the current cursor position are given in the mouse X, mouse Y display at the bottom right of the stage. You don't even need to click. Try this for yourself and see. And don't forget to make use of the pause button or rewind any parts of the video that aren't clear on first viewing. Run the program. Remember, to run a program you click on the green flag button. Remember also that the pointer's coordinates are displayed above the scripting pane. Note also that you can, in fact, move the pointer by simply holding down the left mouse button on it and dragging it around the stage. Try this for yourself. You can set the starting position of pointer using this block from the motion palette. Drag it to your script and place it between the green flag block and the show block. A white line will appear under the green flag block. Let go and the block will snap into place. By the way, a group of blocks is referred to as a stack, and a stack with a hat block becomes a script. Set both input values of the go to block to zero. The go to block sets the sprites X and Y coordinates to the supplied input values. In this program, you're using this block to initialize the pointer's position. Initializing means setting the pointer's starting position to a known value, in this case, 0, 0, the center of the stage. Initialization is an important part of computer programming. Without it, programs can behave unexpectedly, or even, as it's poetically termed, crash. In other words, stop working altogether. Run your program a few times, then try dragging the pointer to a different position on the stage and running the program again. You should see that the effect of each run of the program now is to position the pointer on the center of the stage and then move the pointer 10 steps to the right, resulting in it having an X coordinate of 10. Your program probably runs so quickly that it's difficult to see what is happening. Sense offers two options for running programs more slowly. The right of the green flag and the stop buttons at the top of the Sense window is a slider. This controls the speed at which the program runs. If you move the slider to the left, not to the far left just yet, and then run your program, the program runs in slow motion. You should see each block being highlighted as it's executed, and it should be easier to see the effect of each block in turn on the pointer. Try this for yourself, and try varying the running speed by moving the slider. As the slider is moved to the left, the program slows progressively. If you move the slider to the far left, you should see that a button called Single Step becomes active. Now when you run the program, nothing happens straight away. You need to click on the Single Step button to execute each block in turn. Single stepping through the program. Again, try this yourself. From this point on, if you find it difficult to see what a program is doing, then you should experiment using the slow motion and the single stepping facilities. They are likely to be particularly helpful when you're trying to understand a new program or a new programming concept. To return to running your program at full speed, move the slider back to the far right until the turbo button becomes active again. The turbo button allows you to run a program at an accelerated speed, but you won't need to use it for the exercises in the Sense programming guide. Now you'll begin to develop this simple program into one that draws a square on the stage. First, change this move blocks input value to 55. This block will eventually draw a side of the square and 55 is a suitable length. Run the program again and you should see that the pointer's X coordinate increases by 55. That is, the pointer moves 55 steps to the right. Next, go to the pen palette and drag a pen down block to the scripting pane, positioning it directly below the show block in your stack. 
The pen down block causes a sprite to leave a trail on the stage so you can see where it's been, effectively resulting in a pen line on the stage. Now run your program. You'll see that the pointer now leaves a line behind it. This is what will enable your program to draw a square. However, pause for a moment and think about what happens when you rerun your program. Try this for yourself now. The line drawn in the previous run of the program is still visible. Some more initialization is required to clear away this line and start with a fresh stage each time the program is run. So go to the pen palette and drag a clear block into the scripting pane, positioning it directly below your show block. Right clicking on a block brings up a menu, the help option, which provides information about that block. Use the clear blocks menu help option to find out what that block does. Your script should now look like this. Run your program and you should see a fresh line being drawn each time the program is run. Try running your program in slow motion and single stepping through it to see the effect more clearly. Another initialization step is required. As well as a position, a sprite has to have an associated direction in which it will travel when instructed to move by the move block. You can see which way a sprite is pointing and it's not always obvious unless it's an arrow like our sprite in this program. By default, a newly created sprite's direction is 90 degrees, meaning it will travel horizontally to the right. You will shortly be changing the pointer's direction, but first you should ensure that the pointer always points in the same direction each time the program starts, so that exactly the same square is drawn each time. That is, you should initialize the pointer's direction. Drag this block from the motion palette and insert it directly into your stack below the go to block. The input box of this block is slightly different from those you've already met. It contains a small black downward pointing arrow. And if you click on the arrow, a drop down menu allows you to select a direction from a set of predefined values. Alternatively, you can click inside the input box and enter your own value. For now, ensure that the value 90 is selected. This will make the pointer point to the right, that is 90 degrees to the vertical. You'll now make your program turn the pointer sprite through 90 degrees, ready to draw another side of the square. Drag this block from the motion palette and attach it to the very end of your stack. Set its input value to 90 as shown like this. Now run the program. You'll notice that this time the pointer's arrow ends up pointing vertically down. The turn clockwise block rotates the sprite clockwise by the number of degrees given in the input box. Now we need to repeat the final two blocks in order to draw a square. These instructions will need to be carried out four times in total to draw all four sides. Right click on this block and from the menu that appears choose duplicate. You now have a copy not only of that block but also any blocks attached below it, in this case the turn block. Attach the two new blocks to the bottom of your stack. Repeat the duplication by right clicking on the first move 55 steps block and selecting duplicate. This time four new blocks appear. Attach the new blocks to the bottom of your stack. Save your project and then run the program. Remember, to save a project you click on the save button towards the top left of the sense window. Try single stepping through it as well as running it at full speed. You've drawn a square. If you think about how this program works, you might conclude that in the context of this program alone, neither of these two initialization blocks, the go to and the point in direction 90 have any effect. Subsequent eight move and turn blocks in fact leave the pointer in the same position and facing the same direction as when it starts. However, the initialization blocks are required in case the pointer's position or direction are changed from outside the stack. For example, if the pointer's position has been dragged across the stage like this, or you might run a block outside the stack that changes the pointer's position or direction like this. You need to ensure that any program you make is crash proof as possible. And one way you can do this is by including all the necessary initializations within your programs. Don't forget to like this video if you found it useful and do give us your feedback and ask any questions in the Region 5 Sense Forum. Thanks for watching this video and on to the next exercise.